introduction to the zoology and uh, different sub-disciplines. Now we will discuss uh, the evolutionary and ecological perspective. Now uh, I'll just discuss the main points over here. I'll not discuss the detail. Uh, first, when we say about the zoology and evolutionary perspective, we say that we know that every animal has a common evolutionary past and evolutionary forces uh, that influence their history. Or we can say in easy words that we know that an animal uh, is derived from a common ancestor and in this way different species of animals they are like linked together and uh, if we talk about the overall total organisms or species that are mentioned here are 4 to 13 million species of organisms living today and uh, some of them have been extinct as we know uh, like dinosaurs etc and zoologists might understand the evolutionary process if they are to understand what an animal is and how it originated so uh, to understand an animal in a better way, first of all we need to know how it was evolved. And when we talk about the evolutionary process, first of all there is a term given organic evolution. And here the Latin word evolutus, that means unroll. And organic evolution is change in populations of organisms over time. So or refers to over time. Uh, that you can memorize it in this way that the change in uh, population of organisms over time and uh, due to this what happens is that animal diversity occurs and uh, it also explains the family relationship within animals right now here we see that a scientist that his name is Charles Dow Darwin uh, he uh, he published a lot of uh, literature on this and he convinced the scientists uh, that there is some evolution occurring in different animals and all this occurred in 1859. Since that time, biologists have become convinced that evolution occurs. And uh, uh, overall, uh, there are different concepts now uh, given here. For example, the example of the such lives is given, but I will not talk about in detail. So moving on uh, further, uh, we can say that uh, there are some different characteristics of this uh, organism given but now we'll look at the animal classification and evolutionary relationships now uh, when we talk about this we know that evolution not only explains why animals appear and functions as they do but it also explains family relationship within the animal kingdom means that evolution helps us to identify how an animal behaves, what are its function, and also the relationship among them. And uh, we can say that a very common uh, main point over here is that groups of individual are more closely related. What? Groups of individual are more closely related if they share more of their genetic material, that is DNA, with each other than with individuals in other groups. I mean, the more DNA, the more genetic material they have in similar the more they will be related to one another and uh, furthermore the uh, binomial nomenclature is discussed here that a scientist Carl von Linné he uh, gave us this classifying system and uh, that include two part name a scientific name a two part name the first part is a uh, genus and the second part is the uh, species name for example, here a name is given that is Perocidus uh, microlepis. So, how we can say that uh, the first one is here is the genus and the second one is the species name. And after these, above this, what we can say is that above the species and genus level, there are different uh, groups like families, orders, classes, phyla, or phylum, kingdoms, and domains. For example, here you can see. Uh, that we have an example uh, hierarchy of relatedness islands arthropoda and chordata and uh, in chordata if you look for homo sapiens the species is homo sapiens and uh, the genus is homo the family is hominidae the order is primates the class is mammalia the phylum is chordata the kingdom is animalia and the eukarya is the domain so the more the species have uh, DNA in common they will have uh, they will be related more biology is the study of the relationship between organisms and their environment and we'll look more about it in chapter 6 so uh, 
we can also say that we have for studying zoology we also need to study about the relationship between organisms and their environment and by environment we mean both factors the abiotic and biotic factors now as we see here that um, there is a grave concern for the ecology of the entire world not just Africa's greatest lake the problems however are most acute in developing countries which are striving to change the same world or as industrialized nations so basically two main problems are mentioned here one is the global overpopulation and the exploitation of world resources mean the overuse of the resources uh, these are the focus for our ecological concern first of all we'll look uh, more about the population now we know that the global overpopulation means worldwide when the overpopulation occurs is the root of virtually all other environmental problems and by that environmental problems uh, I'll discuss later on we mean like deforestation and then the global warming etc all that things human population growth is expected to continue in the 21st century and uh, uh, for uh, the time when this book was written the population was written uh, 5 billion out of total of 6.1 billion human now live and also it's given that estimated that the world population will reach 10.4 billion by the year 2100 uh, i'm just telling these for the multiple choice questions or for the just um, you know like verbal concepts and uh, then we have world resources the other main problem the first one was the population and second problem is the world resources that how we are excessively using it and not replacing them now human overpopulation is stressing world resources although uh, due to new technologies uh, there is increase in food production but still due to these methods uh, uh, we have a high per capita food consumption and uh, also that is the continued use of fossil fuels add more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere and contributing to the greenhouse effect and global warming then deforestation you know cutting down of trees of large areas of the world results from continued demand for forest products and fuel now this trend contributes to the greenhouse effect causes severe regional water shortage and results in the extinctions of many plants and animal species especially in tropical forests so you see that uh, by the way how we using it that we are uh, cutting too many plants and trees for our food production for our fuels etc and in the end it's just killing that same animals and plants somewhere so deforestation is playing a main role and uh, we have to preserve the forest now there is given that we the forest preservation would result in the identification of new species of plants and animals and that could be very important to human uh, for example we can discover new foods new drugs building materials and predators of pests. and this was all about this now what are the solutions here is that unless first of all we have to deal with what the problem of human overpopulation unless we deal with the problem of human population however solving the other problems will be impossible so first of all, we have to deal with this uh, problem of overpopulation, and then we can look more towards conserving f uh, forests and etc. All that things. So this was all about the chapter, and uh, briefly looking at the last summary is given. First of all, it's given that zoology. What is zoology? Zoology is the study of animals. Here you see, and it is a broad field that requires zoology to specialize in one or more subdisciplines. We have discussed them. That animals share a common evolutionary past and evolutionary forces that influence their history. And evolution is what evolution explains how diversity of animals arose. Then we say that evolutionary relationships are the basis for the classification of animals into a hierarchical system. You see, we ex discuss the example of Homo sapiens. This classification system uses a two-part name. This name is known as binomial nomenclature, and it was discovered by Carl Lon Winem. And for every kind of animal, the first uh, part is the you know that's a genus, and the second one is a species, like Homo sapiens. Higher level of classification donate more distant evolutionary relationships. All animals share a common environment, and ecological principles help us to understand how animals interact within the environment. Next, we have human overpopulation. Uh, that it is the root uh, at the root of virtually all other environmental problems and it stresses world resources and results in population uh, and it results in pollution, global warming, deforestation and the extinction of different plants and animal species. So this was all about the chapter. Uh, in the next we will be discussing about cells and its organelles uh, in detail. So keep watching.
and if you haven't subscribed yet you can subscribe to the channel